welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. And welcome to episode 183 of the English with Kirsty podcast. And if you want to know more about this episode, you can go to its show notes page, which is englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 183. And this is a solo episode, and I want to talk about a different facet of communication today, and that is dealing with difficult colleagues, because I'm sure we all have them. If you don't have them, you're lucky. I don't have them at the moment because I don't have any colleagues, but I have people that I, I work with and, and yeah, maybe as somebody who is self-employed, I have a lot more choice now about um, who those people are. But when I worked for a company and I've worked for several organisations and companies, there was usually somebody that I would class as a difficult colleague, whether that was because they were in my team, you know, somebody that I was working more closely with or somebody from the wider organisation. Um, not all people get along. Um but if you're working together, unless you're planning to leave or they are asked to leave, um, you do have to try and, and get along together. So that's one of the things that we're going to look at today, how to try and communicate more effectively with people that we don't naturally find easy to get along with um, and what we can do, some strategies for, for dealing with that. Um, because I think a lot of the time on the podcast, I talk about communication when it's planned, you know, like communicating with customers, like when you're planning to advertise your products or services or things where you have time to think about how you're going to respond. But some of the interpersonal situations are more spontaneous and you have to think quickly or give yourself time. But really it's about responding rather than reacting. So if something happens that you're not happy with or that you don't feel is OK, how do you respond to that in a constructive way? Um, because if you don't, you can end up making the situation worse. So thinking back to my time at at work, um, I definitely had people that I, I found exceptionally difficult to get along with. Um, and specific problems need specific solutions. So I'm not going to try and answer all the questions or deal with everybody's situation or, or trivialise anyone's situation here. If you're going through a really difficult situation with colleagues, um, it could be that a lot of these strategies won't work because the, the, you know, the problem is too far gone. So but these are more general strategies for everyday problems that you may find and a few tips that, that may help with your communication. I think it's important to look at things in context um, because for a lot of countries, I know that a lot of the, the listeners um, are in countries where we've had a real change in the last year. A lot more people are working remotely. Um, I am somebody who loves working remotely, but I know that not everybody does and not everybody is in a situation where they've got somewhere where they can be uninterrupted and, and work there. So there is a difference um, if you choose to, to work remotely, as, as I did when I set up my business, um, to if you're thrown into working remotely, as many people have been because um, offices are closed and people, are, a lot of people are working from home. Um, and that may mean that all the, all the ways of working need to be reviewed and improved or, you know, new things need to be implemented. So I'm aware that some people have, have had a more difficult time than others with that. Um, and because of that, a lot more communication happens online. And I think for some of us, that was less of a, um, a challenge than for others. So certainly for, for me, even before I was working for myself online, um, I was involved in a lot of things, a lot of different groups, maybe in my spare time, but I'm used to having a lot of contact with people through um, written means, through chats, through emails, through, you know, that's completely normal. But I think some people are really missing the face to face element more than others. And it's possible that those people are, are struggling more with the online nature of life at the moment. And that may affect how they respond to others, how confident they feel doing that how confident they feel taking part in online meetings or online discussions. So I think sometimes it's good to take a step back and think just because it's completely normal for me, um, it may not be for everyone else. So when you have a problem, it's good to look at what is actually the problem. So is it 
is it the person themselves just their personality who they are that you just find them a bit more difficult to to be around and you don't naturally um feel drawn to them as you do to to some other people who are maybe a bit more like you or who see the world in the same way that you do or who get things done in the same way that you do um i know that Certainly when I'm thinking about a collaboration that I'm involved in at the moment um, with another business owner, we are very different, but some things are, um, are, are the same. We are, I'm very structured um, in the way that I approach problems and, um, and we complement each other because my, um, my partner in this venture has um, a, a really good eye for detail and we, we work together well. I know that if it was somebody who was very spontaneous and very last minute, I would find that more difficult. And, and that is part of human nature. You know, we we do naturally feel um, that we can work better with some people than others. Um, but, you know, this is this is work. We have to work with all, all kinds of different people. And that's that's good for us as well to, to develop as individuals. But if something is more difficult for you, is it just the person's nature? Or is it something that they're doing? that you find more difficult um because i remember a colleague i used to have and um, some people found them quite <laughs> difficult um they were quite direct um they didn't waste much time on on small talk they if they thought something was a terrible idea they would tell you um and some people found that quite intimidating and, and quite difficult but we actually got on really well and um, we sometimes went for lunch together and just enjoyed that that way of communicating i'm also a bit like that and we could have clashed um but we didn't we we just found that we could work really well together um because we appreciated that really honest communication and it, it saved a lot of time you know trying to work out what the other person meant so so for me that wasn't another that wasn't a problem for other people it, it was potentially more of a problem because they found it harder to relate to that but that isn't actually something that's wrong as such maybe they could have um, adapted their communication style in some meetings but that's that's more about how how somebody is and in some ways you, you won't necessarily change how somebody is as an individual um but sometimes it's what they're doing that's causing the problem so often that they don't even know that they're doing something wrong like um yeah i think i've mentioned before on the podcast the colleague who left everything to the last minute or the colleague who liked to sing at their desk and i just i just really struggled with that um all the colleagues who I had um, at one point, my desk was quite near a meeting room. So people used to, to gather outside there um, and have really loud conversations. And if I was trying to deal with other colleagues or members of the public on the telephone, that was really difficult because they, you know, they didn't realise they were inconveniencing me. But but they were because they were at the end of my desk being loud. Um, or the colleague who was divisive, who kind of went around trying to get groups of people to have a problem with groups of other people that didn't have a problem with each other to start with to you know to make some kind of um office politics gains that's not about somebody's character that's about somebody being quite destructive and, and doing something that's unhelpful so separating the what is just human nature what is just somebody how they are which you may just have to accept in, in some cases from something specific that they're doing that's that's not okay or that needs to change and sometimes it's the type of communication as well different people need different things and it can be hard to to see that now a lot of us are working remotely because you don't see where people are um struggling necessarily if you're only talking about um work related things you don't have any of the conversations around the um coffee machine that you would have in an office so sometimes you can't spot when when someone's struggling um and some people need more small talk than others. Some people need um, more feedback, like, oh, you're doing a really good job. That's great. Or some people need that to feel to feel good about themselves or that other people are maybe a bit more independent and are not so reliant on that. Um, some people I've noticed with me that I will often see problems uh, or potential problems and I will want to look for solutions to those problems so they don't happen because then I feel I feel more secure like that. I think, oh, well, this could happen, but it's OK because we have a solution if it does. Whereas other people can see that as me looking for like me being negative or looking for problems where they haven't arisen yet. Um, 
and it's how you approach it. So for me, it's a good thing because I know we already have a solution. But for other people, it's like, oh, this is a new idea and already you're finding problems. So it depends on your perspective. And sometimes the um, problems we experience with colleagues can be because we're coming at the situation um, with our different perspectives and don't necessarily appreciate each other's way of thinking. Um, also, sometimes people just don't come across well in, in certain forms of communication. Some people don't find it easy to express themselves in email and they prefer to talk, whereas some other people find it harder to um, give an immediate response. They need a bit of time to process something or to think about something or to consider their opinion on it. So for them, then either an email or written communication is good because they have time or a meeting in a day or so would be good because then they, they aren't being asked to make an, an immediate decision or an, uh, give feedback immediately when they haven't necessarily had access to all the information that they would want to look at. And I think another thing is, what is the person's intention? Because a lot of the time, you know, some people may just be <laughs> wake up with the intention of making everyone else's life difficult. But usually that isn't the case. It's because they they don't have the same priorities as you or they don't realise how their behaviour is having a negative impact on the world around them or on you. Or they don't realise that how they're doing something or not doing something affects other people's ability to do their job. So you know, what, looking at what people are trying to achieve and what's important to them can also help you to understand how they're communicating. So maybe this thing is the most important thing to you. It's, it's critical to what you're doing, but it's just like one of many, many things that someone else has to deal with. Or um, maybe they aren't able to respond because they're waiting for someone else. Or maybe they genuinely don't care about this thing that's so important to you it could be that as well maybe their job means that they should care and, and that's something to be addressed but you know we we don't all have the same priorities and we we don't all have the same amount of time and we don't all have the same deadlines that they could see the issue as important but they also have something else that they need to get done which they see as a higher priority and sometimes those priority discussions can be the source of conflict um, and maybe sometimes maybe they don't have an intention. You look at what a person's intention is, but maybe they just are completely oblivious to how certain behaviour is, is affecting others. And sometimes it, it can be in our nature to avoid conflict, but sometimes the best way is to explain, you know, what the problem is and how that's affecting other people, because then sometimes people just have no idea what they're doing and, and how that's causing a problem or how that's making other people feel stressed or even animosity towards them because they don't know what they're doing wrong sometimes they do and they just don't care but you know it's good to give people the benefit of the doubt to, to at least try and explain another thing is do you have a problem with your processes at work or do you not have a process or a procedure and i don't suggest that you go down the the road of oh well this process point you know 7.56 says that you have to do this and you haven't done this and therefore you know I, I don't mean like that but sometimes if you're going to manage expectations it's good to agree on a plan of action so not just the deadline when everything has to be done but also how you're going to get there who's responsible for each part and when they're going to do their part and how if it's something that has to be done regularly you know is it worth having a process so everybody understands the order that things need to be done in and who's going to do them and how things are going to come together I like structure, I like processes, I'm not going to pretend I don't because I find that they help me to work efficiently. But, you know, sometimes it, it can cause a lot of um, confusion and people just doing what they think is a good idea if you don't have something in place to where everyone is clear and has agreed how something is going to be done. So does the behaviour need to be challenged? Because it's OK saying, oh, yeah, we all need to get along together and we're all different. And, you know, but sometimes somebody is doing something which is just not OK. Um, and so no amount of how to deal with different difficult people training will help you. Like sometimes whether that's a challenge by you or by that person's manager or, or somehow, because um, I don't think everything can be dealt with by just 
approaching communication differently. There are situations where somebody's behaviour just needs to be challenged because it's not OK. Um, you know, bullying, manipulation, um, taking credit for others' work or, or treating people badly because they are perceived to be different in some way. I mean, that kind of stuff isn't OK. And part of dealing with it is, is challenging that um, and doing what you can to make it stop, whether that's affecting you directly or, or someone else. Sometimes those conversations have to be had. And and as on that point, it's good if you can try and not allow them to get too big, because I, I've been in a situation where, um, without going into too much detail, where it was so entrenched and the problems between the individuals had been going on for a couple of years and it was very difficult to find a good solution to that by that point because um, the problems had been going on for so long. I'm not saying it's never possible to fix something like that, but, you know, if you can address problems between colleagues before it gets to that stage, um, it will probably have a better outcome. So if we're looking at communication specifically, so when you're, you're talking to people, I've got a couple of tips that, that may help. Um, and I think we probably all know them, but we don't always think about them at the time when we need them. So it's good to avoid words like always and never, because then it's not specific. It's It feels like an attack on the individual. So like, you never listen. OK, this person may not have listened today and they may regularly not listen. But if you say you never listen, that discounts any time that they did listen. Um, so you never listen um, you're always complaining. Yeah, maybe the person does complain a lot and maybe they complain today, but you're always complaining means they never do anything else. And, and that can make the person feel like, well, there's no point changing them, because if I'm always like this, if you've never seen the times when I was positive or constructive, then what's the point of trying? So it's really good if you can be more specific than using words like always, never, all the time, every day, <laughs> you know, all these, these kind of, I mean, if it is specifically every day fine but um you get the idea try to avoid these sweeping terms that, that keep away from the specifics of what you're trying to say so it's good to focus on actual real life situations that have happened and preferably that people can remember so you know it's better to talk about what happened last week than what happened three years ago in august because chances are that person unless it was a really big event for them as well they, they may not remember if you have a more recent example then it's something specific that people can think about how they perceive that situation and what it was like for them. Um, so focus on the problem rather than the people. So if this doesn't get submitted on time, um, you know, what will happen for the business? What will happen for the team? What will happen for the customer? Um, if, if this issue with the website isn't fixed, then what will that mean further down the line rather than just you haven't done this or you know, you are keeping me waiting or um, you're late again, F focus on the result. What will happen if this doesn't get submitted? What will happen if I don't have the information that I need? And you can also focus on you as well. Like if I don't have this, I'm unable to to meet my targets or to do my job or I'm unable to do the next part of this process. Um, it's difficult for me to like in a meeting, if you, not if you keep, but um, if this happens in the meeting, it's difficult for me to, or if it's difficult for others in the meeting to, or we're not able to. So it's it's not focusing on you, like you're rubbish, you can't do anything right. It's like if, if this situation happens, what will be the result? And sometimes that helps people to understand why that is a problem rather than focusing on you and you're terrible and you get everything wrong. Also focus on the behaviour that you want to challenge, because sometimes it is a behaviour that needs to be challenged um, rather than the person. You may have very clear ideas about what you think that person is. Um, and this is a podcast where we have um, you have to be careful about language. Otherwise, um, it's not available in some countries podcast stores, so I won't use any inappropriate language. But, you know, um, you can focus on things like shouting at people isn't OK or interrupting other colleagues isn't OK. Um, not allowing people to speak isn't OK. Criticising other people's work all the time without reason isn't OK. You know, these are specific behaviours rather than 
you're impolite, you're ignorant, you have no manners, you're rude. Um, these things may all be true in, in your mind, and they may be true generally, but if you focus on the behaviour that's the problem rather than you know, how you would describe that particular difficult colleague, that, that can make the discussion go better. Um, so, yeah, we, we always say this, but try and plan what you're going to say when you can be calm. If, if you're angry and you're meeting aggression with aggression or you're meeting um, sarcasm with sarcasm, then that doesn't go well either. If, if you can take some time out to your calm, um, you may not be able to fix the problem, but you won't lose your temper either. And it will be better for your reputation and you may be able to, to salvage something from this situation if you don't um, descend into, you know, who can who can shout the loudest or who can be the most unpleasant. And sometimes you need to walk away because there's nothing wrong with that to, to go and collect your thoughts and then maybe not like storm out of a meeting kind of walk away. But um, maybe the situation doesn't need to be dealt with immediately. Maybe people need a bit of time to, to collect their thoughts. Um, and certainly if it's something that doesn't demand an immediate response, like um, an email that made you angry, then then take your time to think about how you're going to word your response. Because you, in emails, you can't take the words back once they've been sent. Or you, you can't take them back in, in, you know, when you're speaking either. But especially if something's in writing, it's, you know, you, there's a written record of that. So don't allow your emotions to get the better of you if, if you are feeling particularly upset or angry. And it could be that if you start addressing things like this, you're also doing things that make life harder for others. You know, we we are all um, working with other people and there could be things that, that you're doing or saying or the way that you work or uh, the way that you approach something that, that may be making it difficult for, for other people too. So if you're going to address this the way that other colleagues are behaving, at least be prepared that somebody may have some similar feedback for you. And that's an opportunity for you to, to learn from that and to see how you could perhaps adapt what you're doing to make it easy for other people to work with you as well. And it's always, as I said at the beginning, about responding, not reacting. You can choose your communication style. You can't fix other people's. There will be some people that will always be, say, aggressive or, um, uh, well, rude even. You know, like you can't necessarily fix how other people behave but you can choose how you behave so you don't have to mirror the communication style from them you can make a, an active choice about how you respond and if you know that somebody is likely to I don't know be late or not do something then plan contingencies you, you may not necessarily change them but you can think Okay, I can check in with them a few days before to see how things are going. I can offer to help. I can make sure that people understood what I wanted from them because that is a big, um, that's a way that we can make sure that people, you know, if somebody didn't understand what we wanted, maybe we won't get what we wanted because it wasn't clear in the first place or it wasn't clear to them. And I know that's hard when people say they have understood and haven't because they don't want to um, to look stupid. Um, and I know that that is a challenge in, in some areas. But checking that people are on track with what you've asked them to do and know what you want them to do is a good way to ensure that if there are problems, you find out about them the, before um, it, it's likely to be a, a real problem. So and I think ultimately for everyone, change is hard right now. Any kind of change is hard, even if it's positive change. And I know a lot of people are enjoying working from home. Um, not everyone is. And I, I think it's... It has been good for some people, but also it's, it's hard for some people. Um, some things are easier because maybe if you've got somebody that you find difficult to work with, um, if you don't have to share an office with them, maybe that is a, a plus point. You know, it's a good thing. Um, less contact with them, only having contact when you need to speak to them. That, that could be really good for your working relationship. Um, but sometimes it can feel harder because people feel less supported, um, and some companies have changed how they work, so all change takes time to get used to. And some people have other things going on, whether that's like additional caring responsibilities, because at least here the schools are closed at the moment. Um, or, you know, there are 
the numbers of, of people with the virus are, are still quite high. So then they may know somebody who's affected or have been affected themselves by that. So you never really know what's going on in, in other people's lives as well. Um, but remote working doesn't mean you have to be on your own. So if you if you do feel like you need support, then um, I would encourage you to try and look for that before it, it, you know, before it becomes a bigger problem, whether that's from a co-worker or a manager or a friend, um, not to feel that you, you have to struggle on your own. So ask for help if you need it. Um, I've been in situations where the smartest thing is to, to walk away from difficult colleagues, um, but most of the time it doesn't have to get that far and there are things we can do to make working together a bit easier um so think about that if i hope that some of those tips are helpful and um otherwise have a good week and have fun learning english if that's what you're doing or in improving your communication skills if, if that's um if that's what you're interested in as well I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.